Good news, it's Friday, my friends. Love Hot Poly Side coming at you. Michael Pickering here talking our famous question. What's going on in the world today? And let's go straight to the goodness on this Friday. To the world of sports. And yes, I know, but wait for it. It's everywhere now that the U.S. women's national soccer team will be paid the same amount of money as the men's U.S. national soccer team. Oh, yeah. Score one for women's equality. What's the exact deal, you may be wondering as well? Hell, if I know I don't speak sports, I read it, but I don't know what it means. But I do speak women's rights, and it is always a positive. Eliminating the pay gap. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what I do know, though, about this sport here is that the women's soccer team regularly kick ass on the global scene. And men's national U.S. soccer team? Well, they regularly suck ass every single year on the global scene. Actually, I don't know if that last part's true because I don't know sports, but I do know that the women are way better in global soccer than the men here in the U.S. So hell yeah, give them more money, please. Now to the latest news in beer, because... Why not cross the Ukraine-Russian war with the Finland-NATO beer market brewery trying to get into a new global organization? I have no idea what any of that statement means, but here we go. I'm going to tell it to you. The Olaf Brewing Company, love that name, out of Finland, has made a NATO lager because they just want to get drunk before they join NATO. I have no idea if I saw this and I was like, cool, we're going to talk about it. Next up, scientists are always talking about preserving wildlife and endangered species. And now, they're preserving them in the freezer. In the United Kingdom, there exists a biobank of samples of endangered animals in an effort to be able to maybe, just maybe, bring them back if they ever go extinct. So firstly, I do like this idea. A fail-safe, if you will, to make sure we never lose our friends forever. I dig it. Just don't go all Jurassic Park with it. However, and secondly, this really goes to show that scientists, they have no faith in humanity's ability to preserve endangered species and to keep them from going extinct. I feel you, sciencey folk. I feel you. And now it's time for tomato talk. That's right, we're going to give you seven helpful hints to make your tomatoes grow bigger. And this comes from the AP article, Gardening. A Tomato Lover's 7 Tips for Growing Them Big. I love this name too, huh? Number 1. Select genetically modified tomatoes that are made to be bigger. And well, sheesh, this just seems like you're cheating right away, but let's keep going, you know? Number 2. Get your garden started indoor. Meaning, start with your seedlings indoor, then transplant to a bigger pot, then a bigger pot, and then get them to the ground. Why not? Why not? Number 3. Take off the flowers of the top to force the plant to move more energy to the lower fruit to make them bigger. Hmm, seems reasonable. Number four, look after them daily. Kind of seems like a no-brainer. Number five, get rid of those suckers. And either you know what this means or you don't, because I don't. Number six, don't let your plant grow into a shrub or a scrub or whatever you want to call it, but keep it into one main branch. And number seven, water, fertilize, and weed regularly. Well, that's kind of three different things, isn't it? I mean, don't you think? I surely would have made this into Tuesday's top 10 ways to get your tomatoes big like, oh yeah. And are you growing goods this summer? Right in, let us know what you've got going in your garden. <laughs> and a last piece of news to send you on your wait for the weekend. There's a 51-year-old elephant in the Bronx Zoo named Happy. An animal rights group setting? The elephant ain't happy. And they are fighting in court to see if they can get Happy released into an elephant sanctuary elsewhere in the U.S. And they're doing this by trying to prove in court, according to court documents this is, all right, that the elephant has rights. And one judge commented that if there were perhaps rights for the elephant, there would not dogs have rights too, perhaps? And thereby dogs could not be kept as pets? Question mark. And this, to me, is all really interesting stuff about how we see animals and the animals we keep and versus the animals that we don't keep as pets. And, you know, I'm all about helping the effort save the elephants. But what do you do if saving an elephant has ramifications for other laws that affect pet ownership? Question mark? Think about this during the weekend. What's more important to you, an elephant or a dog? And why is that the case? If keeping an elephant confined isn't okay, 
Then why is keeping a dog or a cat confined? Okay. Right in, as always. I'm curious your thoughts. And that's it. I'm done. I'm spent. I'm out for the weekend. But you know how to find me. Check out lofipolysci.com for today's newest blog post. And it's not a cliche or a catchphrase. It's a lifestyle. Always remember that Lo-Fi Poli Sci is more than just me. It's the week that we be. Talk to you soon, Lo-Fi listeners. Pickering, signing off.